Hello everyone, today I'm testing the new game Marvel's Spider-Man 2. If you play this game, I highly recommend using the AMD driver 25.1.1 because it adds support for the game. Also, make sure to set the VRAM to 6GB to avoid crashes. Let's get started. For my Legion settings, I set it to performance mode, with TDP, SPPT, and FPPT at 25 watts, and OS power mode to efficiency. First, this is the raw performance of the game without FSR enabled, frame generation off, and anti-lag 2 disabled. With medium settings at 800p, the game runs at around 30 to 40 FPS. Initially, I plan to test it at three different resolutions, 800p, 1000p, and 1200p, to see how the game performs at various settings without any upscaling or enhancements. However, after testing at 800p, I noticed that the performance was already struggling, making it clear that higher resolutions like 1000p and 1200p would only result in even lower FPS. Because of this, I decided to skip testing at those resolutions, as the results would be predictable. If you're aiming for the best performance without additional enhancements, sticking to lower resolutions is the better option. Now, this is the game with FSR 3.1 set to quality, frame generation enabled, and anti-lag 2 turned on. With these settings, the game now runs at around 70 to 80 FPS, providing a much smoother experience. However, the performance is not entirely stable yet, since I haven't capped the FPS. With FSR set to quality and frame generation enabled, the game is not only playable but also enjoyable, delivering a significantly improved experience compared to raw performance. The built-in FSR 3.1 frame generation is incredibly effective, making the game feel naturally smooth without any noticeable choppiness or micro stutters. This feature enhances the gameplay experience, making it a great option for those looking to boost performance while maintaining visual quality. Now I will cap the FPS using RevaTuner to see how it affects performance and stability. By limiting the frame rate, I aim to reduce fluctuations and ensure smoother gameplay. This should help maintain a more consistent experience, minimizing sudden frame drops or instability. Now this is the game with RevaTuner capped at 70 FPS. The game runs incredibly stable, maintaining an average 70 FPS with the cap applied. One interesting thing about RevaTuner is that it can detect FSR 3.1's frame generation FPS and also cap the frame generated frames, which isn't possible with other frame generation methods like lossless scaling or AFMF2. For example, with traditional frame generation, I would typically need to cap the base FPS, in this case 35 FPS, so that frame generation can double it to 70 FPS. However, FSR 3.1's built-in frame generation works differently. As seen earlier, without capping FPS, the game fluctuated up to 80 FPS, meaning the base FPS was around 40 FPS. With FSR 3.1, I can directly cap the frame generated 70 FPS using RevaTuner, and it stays locked at that frame rate. Normally, frame generation doesn't behave this way. You can only do this with FSR 3.1's built-in frame generation, making it much more flexible and easier to control for a smoother experience. Now I tested Radian Chill Capped FPS. Unlike RevaTuner, Radian Chill cannot cap FSR 3.1's frame generation FPS. It can only limit the base FPS. That's why I set the idle FPS to 30 and the peak FPS to 40 for this test. While Radeon Chill may work well for AFMF2, I don't recommend using it with FSR 3.1, especially when Radeon Anti-Lag 2 is enabled. Even AMD Adrenaline, you cannot use Radeon Chill and Anti-Lag at the same time. Additionally, the longer I tested, the more I noticed stutters and frame drops when both features were enabled together. This suggests that using Radeon Chill alongside FSR 3.1 and Anti-Lag 2 may negatively impact performance and smoothness. If you're using FSR 3.1's built-in frame generation, I'd recommend sticking to RevaTuner for FPS capping instead. In conclusion, if you play Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and experience crash issues, I highly recommend using AMD driver 25.1.1 and setting VRAM to 6GB. With these settings, I can play the game for hours without a single crash. Furthermore, after testing different methods of FPS capping with FSR 3.1's built-in frame generation, it's clear that not all capping solutions work the same way. RevaTuner and Radeon Chill both offer FPS capping, but their effectiveness varies depending on the frame generation technology being used.
Riva Tuner provides the most stable and flexible FPS capping for FSR 3.1 frame generation. Unlike lossless scaling or AFMF2, where you need to cap at the base FPS, for example, 35 FPS to get 70 FPS, FSR 3.1 allows direct capping of the frame generated FPS. This means that if the game fluctuates around 80 FPS, you can cap it at 70 FPS in Riva Tuner, and it will maintain that cap without issues. For FSR 3.1, Riva Tuner is the best option for FPS capping, as it works directly with the frame generated FPS rather than just the base FPS. Additionally, if you want the game to look sharper at 800p, you can enable integer scaling, set it to full panel, and turn on Radeon image sharpening with sharpness set to 80%. This is optional and can be adjusted based on personal preference. With the settings provided here, you'll get the best experience out of this game. Lastly, I do not recommend using AFMF2 or lossless scaling frame generation with this game, as FSR 3.1's built-in frame generation already works smoothly. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.